Um, I mean, there are various <laughs> inroads between the two. Um, kind of coming from an actor network perspective, you know, there's various relations that empower one another in, in this network of games, media, social media, the players, you know, how they all interact and, and the effects of this interaction. I can think of games which have directly materially changed because of player interaction on forums and Facebook and all of these platforms. I can think of ways in which games have died because of that interaction. Uh, the new FIFA game coming out is a great example. It's dead before it's arrived because word got out that um, you know the development team, I think Ubisoft in Montreal, um, it was a kind of development hell project and this team has been clobbered together at the last minute to make this FIFA game which comes from a long succession of you know, uh, the canon of stealth games in, in digital game history. And because of the reputation it has, the current project is a kind of development hell, forum activity has already damned it and said it's worthless, it's going to be shit, don't play it. And they're trying to recuperate this brand image through various social media actions in their marketing team, releasing gameplay videos the first 15 minutes, uh, interviews you know, with the team and so on. But what's happened is it's created a cynicism so that it's a preemptive cynicism. So no matter what material comes out, it will be cynically handled by the players. They'll say, oh yeah, that person's bullshitting. Or, oh yeah, okay, look, that looks good. But did you see the AI? You know, and someone might rightly say, well, you know, what about, what, what difficulty setting was it on? Oh, I bet it was on hard. I bet it was on ultimate difficulty. And look at it, it's rubbish, even though they couldn't, you know. So it's this, this preemptive cynicism that can really have a profound backlash um, that reverberates through the network to the actual product and can have it get cancelled. Um, some instances on, I know have happened that I can't bring to mind right now, I'll think about it. Um, it can, but then it can, in reverse, enhance a product. I think actually Ubisoft's Deus Ex, um, human, the Human Revolution, um, and that had a horrible reputation. Um, as coming from Invisible War and this game that ruined the franchise. And then they had a demo leak. Um, you know, accidentally a demo got released onto the internet. They didn't approve it, they didn't authorize it. It got leaked, people were uh, downloaded. Actually, it was a part of the game, it wasn't even a demo because that implies authors. It was just a leaked part of the game. People played it and they loved it, and through word of mouth, it became this phenomenon. And, you know, just all of these. Um, kind of evangelists, you know, just, as we say in Australia, spruked it, which is that they loudly declared it everywhere they could, on every forum, on every tweet, you know, this game's amazing, have you tried this? And it, that relationship was crucial to it becoming a bestseller, I think. I hadn't even heard of it until it just appeared everywhere on Twitter and on Facebook and, you know, on all of these forums that I visit, that this game, you've got to try this leak. And in trying to leak, I, I discovered what a great game it was. I never would have heard of it. So that's a really, yeah, it's a very intimate relationship, I think, between social media and games these days. You know, almost inseparable.